God bless everyone, and I hope you're having a great Merry Christmas season. I'm Tim Rowe, and this is Channel 40's hot new law show. Yeah, Christianity and the law, they really go together. God is very concerned about justice. And we're going to be picking up where we left off on our first show. We're going to be talking about the social implications of taking purr out of the schools. And I think this will really excite you, and in some ways, we'll see the effect on students when we took purr out of the schools. We're going to have our hot legal news, our top five list, and our scripture of the week. But this show's for you. We're here to help you with any legal problems that you may have. And really reach out and tell people it's time as Christians that we stand up for our legal rights. So I think you'll enjoy this great show, Faith in the Law, here on Channel 40. Thanks for tuning in. At Faith in the Law, we're a very practical show for all you people who have got your new TV sets. You can adjust the color right now to Jill's sweater. (laughs) Um, Check out your reds and your blacks. Jill Savage, welcome back to Faith in the Law. Thank you very much. We appreciate you coming as usual all the way from Kokomo. Oh yeah, big trip. She's the uh, firecracker of Kokomo on the show. Does the, um, you still do the... uh, Radio shows in Kokomo? And yeah, I fill in at Z92.5 and sometimes at WIOU. So if you're in Kokomo, listen to Jill. She's great. We stream. Really? Z925FM.com. Cool. Yeah. Well, we're going to be talking a little bit about some hot legal news. And one thing I want to mention that's really cool is um, recently, this was on November 21st, that the National Religious Leaders gathered in Washington, D.C. and signed a historic declaration called the Manhattan Declaration that they were going to stand up for Christian conscience. And there was a lot of people from the Divinity School at Stanford, uh, Hope Christian Church, the Diocese of Washington, D.C., and they said that basically um, it's a 4,700-word declaration that issues a clarion call to Christians to adhere to their convictions and inform civil authorities that the signers will not under any circumstance abandon their Christian consciousness. Um, and if you want to get on our website, you can actually check it out. It's also on LC. Dot org. Actually, uh, Colson, the one that was with Nixon and stuff, and mm-hmm. the, yeah, he's the one that kind of spearheaded this, too. Great. So it's great. Uh, of course, we're talking a little bit about schools, so we've got to talk about Connecticut. They threatened a lawsuit because they were going to have graduations in church. <sighs> so the American Civil Liberties Union, God bless you guys. I mean, one of my good friends from law school used to head up ACLU, but sometimes I think you guys are a little misguided. I guess there's a group out there called Americans United for Separation of Church and State. Uh, they were very mad that they may have graduation ceremonies at a church, and I guess yeah. they've done it the last two years. Yeah. Americans, you need to lighten up just mm-hmm. a little bit. Um, let's talk a little more about schools. I guess in Wilson County, this is in uh, one of our neighboring cities, Nashville, Tennessee. Um, mm-hmm. I actually have a country... Uh, uh, contract waiting for me when I stop doing this <laughs> show. <laughs> but the Wilson County School District has consented to a court order that affirms the religious freedom and freedom of speech for all students because they were not allowing them to put God in student-made posters promoting National Prayer Day and see you at the poll events. Were those the ones that were covered over with the graphic? I think so. A- and they won. Yeah, they did. The, the, guy in the, the students won. And the Alliance Defense Fund, you can get on their website, on our website. These are a great bunch of attorneys that fight for religious freedom in our country. Um, And, of course, the um, ACLU filed a lawsuit that they don't like, In God We Trust, as the national motto, and wanted to try to not have it at the Capitol Visitor Center in Washington, D.C. I think really what the ACLU needs to do is we, we need to send them some Bibles. Get them that, maybe we should do that for Christmas. Send them a bunch of Bibles and say, you know, in God we trust may be a good thing to do. But again, our friends at the ACLJ, the American Center for Law and Justice, have stepped forward to try to seek dismissal of that lawsuit. I guess in it they were saying our national motto was e pluribus unum, which mm-hmm. is out of many, one, but that's really not our national motto. In God we trust, we must, we must save. Somehow we must save that. Um, 
And in fact, our Congressman Mike Pence commented this model is now permanently etched in the Capitol, which now serves as a gateway into the United States Capitol building. It's my hope that this will always be a visible reminder of the faith from which we come and the God who has so greatly blessed our nation. Well, way to go, Mike, from uh, Indiana. So maybe these congressmen, if they trusted in God a little bit more, they wouldn't be uh, making all the news on MSN and Fox and C-SPAN and all those. Um, and then, let's see if we've got one more here. Of course, the state of Maine. The churches have been threatened with IRS complaints because they supported a resolution on the voting ballot that marriage is between a woman and a man. So then they told all their followers to, hey, let's um, report any IRS violations, or let's just say they're violating the IRS to try to get the IRS on them in Maine. What, what, what propelled this? How can they do this? It's, it's amazing the length. Sometimes people think churches go to take away freedoms, but there's more people out there trying to take your freedom away as a Christian. Yes. yes. And we have rights under the Constitution. That's what this show's about. And we're going to stand up and fight back. And we need to, as Christians, for too long we've sat back and allowed the atheists, the agnostics, to control our legal system. So these are some hot legal news. You can always get on our website and check it out. We've got all of these on there. But we're going to go to one of our favorite segments. It's our top five. And I always have my co-host Jill read the top five reasons that education's really missing something. Uh, when you need a bodyguard for you and the teacher, number five. That is frightening. And we're going to be talking about some statistics that, uh, boy, when I went to school, I was afraid of the teachers because they had a paddle that was as big as my head. Yeah. <laughs> so number could, four. They sat me in the hall one time and put my coat on me and on a hook. So you were a coat rack for the day. Because I was a class clown. I got paddled for the class clown too and it really helped me a lot. I don't think I would have had faith in the law unless I got paddled. Well, Number four. I, I escaped battle. <laughs> Many students spend more time reading Facebook than their school books. That's true. Facebook. What would we do without Facebook? I mean, Facebook is great, but... We're actually on Facebook. You yes. can become our fan on Facebook. You know, yeah. we're trying to increase our fan base, so get on and People there. are kind of slow to comment. But I think once your book hits here in six days, yeah, more right. comments will come in. I hope. Number three, instead of college, some students think they can have a future on YouTube. No, that is that is scary. So many things have launched through YouTube. There there have been a lot. There have been some crazy stuff YouTube. And some good things. But, but I don't think that's the traditional path God wants no. you to, to accomplish this purpose. If so, you'll lot. know. Yeah. It, yeah. You'll be the YouTube master. Yeah. Students answer more text messages than questions on the list. Ooh, okay, is that? Yeah. I'm averaging three to four thousand text messages a month. Is that bad? Wow, Joe's more popular than I am. I like to tweet. <laughs> oh, we're on Twitter too. <laughs> we are. And number one, oh, needs some tweet. Uh, need some spiritual motivation and emphasis on virtues of character, honor, respect, caring, and giving. Ultimately, those are the virtues that will determine where your life goes and is. Parents, teachers, people trying to make an impression, athletes, those are the virtues, I think, that are important. So those are our top five lists. And as always, if you want to contact us on Faith and Law, um, we do have a website. It's a wonderful website. Get on all of these cases we've been talking about. News releases are on there. Um, you can contact us through that. And again, this is your show if you have legal problems. If you have a question, if there's something going on, if your student tried to pray in school and got censored or got expelled, you know, let us know on these things. But contact us. You can, we'll get a contact graphic up here. It's uh, Tim Rowe. You can email me at trowlaw at aol.com. Um, and we have faithinthelaw.com. We have rowanhamilton.com. Uh, and you can contact us through any of these. Are you still averaging 900 email a day? Well, not through this show, but I'm on a list served for the trial lawyers. So okay. Yeah, I get a lot of them. But I will answer your email, so email me. Don't be afraid. This is your show. If God's laying it on your heart to get a hold of me, do it. And check out Faith in the Law. We have some wonderful links on there. We've got videos that we played on our last shows on there, the one from Britt Nicole, so it's wonderful. No registration. Nothing. No spam. Just go. There's a lot of information. And then my new book's coming out uh, here Six in a few days. days called The Magnificent